The creator of Linux detailed the latest Linux update at the Linux Foundation's Open Source Summit Europe event. At the Open Source Summit OSS Europe event in Vienna, Aust Austria, on September... Oh, thank you, babe. Did you make this? Oh, it's so good. It looks so good. Oh, it looks almost as good as you. The always colorful Linus Torvalds... Uh, took the uh, the stage at a, in a fireside chat to detail his views on the latest open source and Linux developments. The Linux Foundation, which hosts this the event as well as employs Torvalds, used the summit to make a series of announcements. Among the news, the free 5GC open source 5G core software project is moving to the Linux Foundation. Uh, Kamara project issued its first release, providing common network APIs for telcos and hyperscalers. AWS moved its open search technology to new governance under the Linux Foundation. Linux kernel 6.11 releases out. We had a very good regular cadence of releases, and it resulted in the fact that we're doing the releases very or every roughly nine weeks, Torvald said. That means the releases are not exciting, but they're not supposed to be. They are timely, and they are hopefully very reliable. But I'm excited, but exciting is not, I think, the goal. I agree. That's a great goal. By the way, that is a great goal at this point. It's a great, great goal of Linux. I love that. What's new in Linux? The Linux kernel is not the core component of any Linux distribution, or the Linux kernel is the core component of any Linux distribution. Torvald emphasized that most kernel changes are still driver updates. That said, core kernel development continues even now, 33 years after he first started Linux. Yeah. I'm still surprised by the fact that we're doing very core development, Torvald said. Uh, citing recent work on fairly low-level virtual file system code and discussions about memory management and things that have been around forever. This continued evolution, he suggested, is driven by the continued expansion of the hardware-based base, but also the continued expansion of the user base. I'm, I'm excited about... about I, I want to know... I want to know his thoughts on the title! The title! I want the, I want the title! Um... One of the most significant recent milestones in Linux development has been the completion of the real-time Linux project, which Torvalds uh, Riley described as having a very brief development cycle of about 20 years. <laughs> the real-time Linux project brings a high level of determinism to operating system functions. This project exemplifies the sometimes lengthy process of kernel development. By the way, that's wild. Does he mention Rust? I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. I think that uh, I think title already happened. While kernel development is very active, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can get a new feature, file system, or anything into the kernel very quickly, Torvald said. There's often a long development period that people seldom even see. Yeah, everyone that's, I mean, I, I met quite a few uh, core contributors, and they all say for their job when they start working on something, their very first time they ever worked on it, they were warned that what they're about to do is going to be a multi-year adventure. It's not some small, like, just in and out. Uh, Torvald remains optimistic about the state of open source. Contrary to the concerns about recent tech industry layoffs and reduced corporate involvement in open source, Torvalds paints an optimistic picture. I feel like open source is doing very well, he said. People take open source for granted now in a way they absolutely did not just two decades ago. Yeah, I mean, there's just more people. There's people, I mean, imagine a world where you grew up where you had to pay for a C compiler and now you just have a compiler. It's just you have multiple C compiler options. You probably have a fundamentally different appreciation for open source comparatively to somebody who always had React, Express, multiple open source languages, right? Like you just you just didn't grow up in the same world. You just, you just didn't. And so it probably feels pretty confusing. Torvald highlights the democratizing effect of open source, particularly for newcomers to the tech industry. He noted that any new programmer can use open source as a way to enter the industry and make connections without necessarily having gone to the right schools or having personal connections that are often needed in many industries. It's true. It's true. It's very, very true. Again, I, what I just said about, a C, you know, it was very hard for me to find a good C compiler in 2007. Like tech is way easier to get into now than it's ever been. I do have pretty great appreciation for it because I can't believe like NetBeans was one of those moments where I was I was so happy just about free software in general because it had autocomplete and it was free and I could just use it. Like even just the notion of free software was just it felt so 
Prime was a huge NetBeans story. I was. I love NetBeans. NetBeans just holds this special place in my heart because it gave me the ability to peruse through documents without having to go to the Java 1.5 website. And do you know how they had like the five different iframes all stacked together? You know what I mean? It was like, it was hard. It was hard to love it. But I, got, I actually could just do it, man. You know, it was miserable. Yeah, it was miserable. But I actually could just like use my IDE to per peruse the documentation. I just, I will always have this super fond look at like my first experience into that world. For those looking to start a new open source project, Torvalds advise finding a niche that is both personally interesting and meaningful to others. I think I'm going to have the opposite say on this one. I'm just throwing it out there. In tech industry, so much is about hype. Everybody is following everybody else like lemmings off a cliff, trying to chase the next big thing. And I don't let's see, and I don't think that's a successful strategy, Torvald says. I think you need to find something that isn't what everybody else does and excel at that and be the first to do something slightly different. I mean, obviously, the hard part about that is that how many millions of people are there? Oh, uh, in different coast, uh, we use charm. So uh, bubble tea would be the thing behind everything. Uh, like, first off, you can't, I hate to break this to you, but you can't, like, not everybody can be unique. There's only so many Linuses out there. There's going to be very few Linuses. That's that. Two million software engineers, according to Google. Like, I hate to tell you this, but there's not two million unique individual slots. There just isn't. Uh, second off, I don't think, like, uh, this is where I probably disagree with him, uh, by the way. Indifferent ghost. Appreciate you. Thank you for that sub. Um, this is probably another reason or another where, place where I will disagree with Torvalds. I don't necessarily think that it has to be meaningful to others. If you have something you really would like to make because you'd really like to learn about a particular topic, and this can be just simply you recreating HTTP 1.1 because you've never worked with the TCP socket before and you're just trying to understand things. You'd like to create your own server. You'd like to go through the whole nine yards. Like that kind of stuff is just hugely impactful to your career and everything. Like sometimes you just need to build something that is useless to many people that is interesting to you for you to find the thing that will be interesting to other people. Learning the why or the how behind what you do is so important. Torvalds created Linux for himself for fun and learning. He literally said that, yeah. I think he may have lost the reason why he created Linux. Because after he created it, he said, hey, does anyone want to check out what I made? I thought it was really fun, and I'm really happy with where it's going. Is anybody else interested? And so it's like one of those things that I find, I, I just want to make sure you understand, it's hype is both good and bad. And the reason being... Let's imagine that, uh, like right now, Zig and Rust are kind of in their hype phase, even Rust. If you get really good at Rust, you're one of the few people that are really good in Rust. You, maybe you can't be the only person or the first one to do something slightly different, but you could at least get really good at something in which there's a few group of people getting really good at something, and that may have a disproportionate need in the future. That could be really useful. That could genuinely be super useful. Same thing with Zig. And so it's like, is hype bad? I can't even tell you if hype is good or bad. And it probably just depends on the type of hype. Anyways, I really actually wanted to talk about this because I actually have like the opposite take as Torvalds, which is just, I don't think you necessarily have to pursue meaningful projects. I think you should pursue things you really, really want. They're just things you want to do. Here, let me give you a little example. I could do so many different things in my life with my time, but I chose two days ago to create uh, this right here. I now have a little flag next to this line, just specifically this line. And when I go and I open it, it gives me this little teeny tiny bit of line in that little note that I just created. When I want it gone, I just give it a little VRD right there. Done. It's gone. I created that because I wanted a little ability to attach a note to a specific line for a little while. And that's that. Right? Like that's not really important, right? You did something that was meaningful, it's, it's, but it's only for me, and it's not even really meaningful. I just wanted to see if I could build it. I, I could have easily, the, the thing that I built it for was this right here. I wanted the ability to mark this HTTP file with marks right here. Now, what I could have done, which is what I was doing, was going through right here, and I could have just had a separate file. There's actually no need for it. It's not really that meaningful. It doesn't really add anything. I wanted something the way I wanted it, and that's that. And I tried to make it so that I wouldn't forget stuff. So it's meaningful to me only. And I think it's utterly not useful to anybody else. Isn't what Torvald meant when he said meaningful, something important to you? I think you need to find something that isn't what everybody else does and excel at it. Hold on. 
He sa- uh, he says effectively you need to find something in which is meaningful. Uh, hold on. There you go. Personally interesting and meaningful to others. I am more on the personally interesting side. Enjoying and learning for the sake of learning. I am building an auto-scaling game server. There is, It may be meaningful to others for the sake of being able to look at it, but it is not. I'm not building it for anybody else but myself. I'm building it for me because it is interesting to me. Right? It's meaningful to myself. And for me, this is how I learn, is by building the thing. I see this very, very often. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is I see this very, very often, which is people get so wrapped up in trying to create something somebody else wants to look at. And that's what makes me sad, is that I don't think you need to constantly pursue something that somebody else needs to look at. I, can, I cannot tell you how many people I've seen absolutely beat up by the fact that they can't create something sex- successful. And it's because... Their meaning, their purpose, their value, whatever kind of way you are, whatever words you're looking for to kind of fulfill this kind of thing that we're kind of drawing right now is that their value comes from GitHub stars or from Twitter talking about it. And I think that's kind of really, I think that's really hard for a lot of people because there's only so many stars to go around. There's only so many people that are going to be looking at your stuff. And then you end up being sad because your stuff isn't going far. You end up spending a bunch of time pursuing meaningless things because you're trying to like you're you're missing the entire boat. It's like saying that you can't even make someone else happy until you learn to be happy yourself. Yeah, there's there's something there's something about that. I I I'm not sure if I'd have to think. I've heard that phrase a lot of times. I'd have to think about that phrase a lot before I actually feel like I agree with it. Which I'm not sure if I agree with it. But nonetheless, anyways, I just want to make sure people really have that pursuit and that passion inside their bones. You know what I mean? So have that pursuit and passion, and if nobody ever looks at it, ask yourself this one question. Did you enjoy build, or ask yourself these two questions. Did you enjoy building it, and on the other side, are you better at what you're doing? And if at the end of the day, you, taught, you, you actually nail both those things, what a magical moment, right? What a magical moment that you, you got better, you feel more equipped in life, you feel like you've dispelled most of your imposter syndrome, and B, you actually got to enjoy it. Like, how amazing would that be? Like, that's that's everything you want in a project. And maybe, just maybe, a bunch of people really enjoy it too. The name is The Primogen.